Hi everybody, John Meadows here with my friend Paul Carter and we have a special guest demo today, Chase Savoy. So we just we just finished our uh, hip thrust and Paul has some really good cues here that I thought this would be a great exercise index video for you all. I know a lot of people have back problems and issues, their hamstrings, they feel the hip thrust more there or they feel in their quads. People a lot of times just don't quite feel this the way that it should feel. And I don't think it's a bad exercise. I think just think it's execution of the exercise. And Paul's really good at this. So he's gonna walk you through the keys and how to do a hip thrust correctly so you can really nail your glutes. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna stress that most people don't actually do when they're doing hip thrust is they don't stabilize their pelvis with their abs. And the reason why this is important is because the more stability we have at a joint, the more that the muscles that we're trying to work, the better output that they can have in the movement because they're not trying to stabilize the joint. So one of the most important first things to remember is when you're doing a glute thrust to always have tension in your abdominals. That'll help your glutes to get a much better contraction. So I wanted to point that out first because that's probably one of the most important things you can remember when doing these to keep your lower back from hurting, keep them feeling like other parts are working because they're usually trying to stabilize that pelvis. So get your abs nice and tight, a lot of tension, and get them to stabilize before you do the concentric part of the hip thrust. All right, so now we're gonna go to the other couple of cues here. The one is when you're at the bottom is you're gonna want your ankles and your knees to be stacked if we're trying to bias the glutes here. If you're trying to use these as kind of an integrated movement where you're just trying to move a lot of weight, then you don't really have to worry about it quite as much. But if we're trying to work the glutes and bias the glutes, you wanna stack these ankles and knees. So Chase is gonna walk that back just a little bit. Now he's got good stacking going on here between those joints. So as you can see here, he's gonna stabilize in his abs and the range of motion is not very deep. You'll see a lot of people get really deep. Go ahead and get really deep at the bottom, Chase. This is not what we want when we're trying to bias the glutes. So we're gonna come back up and stabilize the abs here, Chase. Here we are. And then we're just gonna get hip extension right here. So go ahead and hip extension, Chase, right here. Push your glutes all the way through. There we go, right there. Stabilizing with the abs nice and hard. And that's the whole range of motion, go ahead. So now do your reps, one, two. And you'll notice, like I said, the range of motion, not very deep. We're just trying to bias the glutes here. Chase, keeping good stabilization with his abs there. Just getting good output for his glutes. And let's get two more, Chase. Right there, one, and two, and hold, and back down. Good. Now, the other thing we can mention is if you don't have your uh, stack lined up correctly, your knees and your ankles, then we change the kind of the what we're targeting. Right. So when your feet are out more, talk about that a little bit. So Chase, stay there, and I won't, I won't have you lift anymore. But this is, you can actually, if you were trying to use it for different purposes, you could go back like you're gonna do them though. So if your feet are out and you don't have good stacking here and your feet are up here, what happens is when you thrust here, you actually get a pretty good hamstring. You get the yep. hamstrings yep. involved a lot with the glutes here. So this is why you'll see a lot of people and they'll say, I don't feel it. They're not bracing here and they got their ankles way too far out. So the hamstrings really come into play when you do them like this. The other thing is when you get too far this way. So when you're not stacked and you bring your heel too far close to your body, yeah. And you'll see this sometimes too. Now what you're gonna find, because we wear quads, you already feel it, right? So now when he does it, what he's feeling is his quads are coming more into play. So the truth is you can use the hip thrust in a multitude of ways as an integrated movement where you're actually bringing more hamstrings or bringing more quads or stuff like that. But if you're trying to use what we consider more of the glute bridge for the glutes, then perform this way with a shorter range of motion, we're making sure you're contracting your abdominals really well to give your pelvis stability and making sure you get good stacking on your knee and your ankle joints. There you go, guys. Glute <laughs> bridge, hip thrust, 101. That's how you do it. If you like that video, I know you're gonna love my app available on the Google Play Store for Android, iPhones, and the Apple Store. There's so much information on here, it's amazing. Training, workouts, hundreds of workouts, nutrition methodology questions, chemical enhancement, supplementation, client prep, and a Q&A button. Check it out.